Welcome to the Data Scientist Podcast with Dr. Stylianos Kabakis. Dr. Kabakis is a data scientist, statistician, and blockchain expert with a mission to educate the public about the wonderful capabilities of technologies like AI, data science, and DLTs. These technologies have the potential to transform the world, the economy, and our lives. However, there is too much misinformation around tech, and so most people are just confused about what is true and what is not. Whether you are a CEO, an entrepreneur, or just an enthusiast, the Data Scientist Podcast helps you separate reality from hype. Hi, everyone. In this episode, I want to talk about the AI Transformation Playbook by Andrew Eng. For those of you who don't know him, Andrew Eng is one of the most prominent researchers in machine learning worldwide. He's a professor in Stanford University, and he's also involved in many different projects, having worked with Google, Baidu, and now also uh, working on his own company called Landing.ai. So Andrew Eng is very much involved in not only in machine learning research, but also in digital transformation and AI strategy. And I find his work very interesting, mainly because I do lots of work in the same area. Those of you who have been following me, who have been reading my thoughts on the datascientist.com, would have probably noticed that I've done a lot of work in AI strategy, data science strategy, data management. I've been running workshops on this area with the Tesseract Academy, and I've also written a book, The Decision Maker's Handbook to Data Science. So it's always very interesting to see the thoughts of some other practitioners. And Andrew Eng's AI Transformation Playbook is particularly interesting. So in summary, he says that there need to be five steps in order to transform an enterprise with AI. And it's very important to state that Andrew Eng is mainly focused on larger companies, larger enterprises. I, most of my work is with uh, organizations which are not as massive as Google, but nevertheless, some of the learnings from bigger organizations translate also into smaller organizations. So the five steps are execute pilot projects to gain momentum, build an in-house AI team, provide broad AI training, develop an AI strategy, and finally, develop internal and external communications. So Andrew Wang recommends, and that's a recommendation I absolutely agree with, that it's a great idea to start with small pilot projects in order to demonstrate the value of AI to the company. So a pilot project should be ideally a project that is valuable for a company, but it's not very difficult to deliver and it can help all the stakeholders in the company understand what is the process of implementing AI and deploying AI solutions, what are the risks involved. But at the same time, after the completion of the project, uh, the stakeholders and other people in the company, other departments, will be more convinced of the benefits of AI. So the pilot project is used in order to both test the waters, but also build some credibility around this approach within the company. The second step is to build an in-house AI team. So a pilot project can usually be done in collaboration with an external team, but eventually you want, if you actually want the enterprise, your company to become data-driven, you need to build an in-house team. Building an in-house team will probably require to create a C-level position which is focused on AI. So you can either have a chief information officer who is focused on AI or create the position of a chief data officer or a chief AI officer. And this point connects with the next one, which is that you should provide broad AI training across the organization. So once you have the C-level position set up, it's very important that the C-level and the leaders of the divisions and then the employees themselves, they understand what AI is and how it can be implemented and how it can help the business. And obviously, the kind of training that 
each level of the company will need is going to be different. So Andrew Eng breaks this down in three levels. So he says that the executives and senior business leaders uh, require like uh, four hours of training, maybe a bit more. And this is actually the kind of training that I've been doing with the Test Direct Academy. This is uh, the kind of things I'm covering in my book, The Decision Maker's Handbook to Data Science. And this kind of training is about helping the decision makers understand what AI is and how it can help an organization. The leaders of divisions, they need to get deeper than that and they need to, un to understand how to also carry out AI projects, how to scope out a project. So in this case, you need to get a bit more technical. Yeah, you need to get a bit more technical. And then finally, we have the employees, the developers, the engineers that are going to deploy the solutions. We will need to have some actual data science training. And potentially some of those employees might not need training because they might be data scientists. But if we're talking about software developers, they need to know enough about data science so they feel comfortable working with data scientists. And then the last two steps are develop an AI strategy and develop internal and external communications. So the AI strategy comes after there is a clear understanding of the requirements that an organization has and how AI can sit within the overall context of an organization's strategy and goals. And what Andrew Eng recommends, and I think that's actually a great idea, is to build an, an in-house team and to focus on projects which can build a sustaining advantage and create virtuous circles. So maybe you use AI to build a better product which is going to get you more users and then more users is going to give you more data which you can then use this to get to build an even better product so you have to think in these terms you shouldn't treat ai in the same way that you know many companies treated the internet during the dot-com era so there were many retailers who simply created websites and for their to sell the products but they never became internet companies because they used the website in order to simply promote the products that they had on the stores, but they never really became internet first companies in the sense that Amazon is, you know, where Amazon is fully utilizing the internet. They don't have a brick and mortar stores, they conduct A-B tests, they have a recommender system. So Amazon managed to build a competitive advantage by fully utilizing the internet. So this is what Andrew Eng recommends as well. Don't just use AI as a tool, as a way to, let's say, simply increase uh, sales or just improve efficiency. Think how we can go beyond that, how you can become data-driven so that you're able to compete on a whole different level. And the final step, which is about communication, the final step of this process is to develop internal and external communications is about making sure that everyone is basically on the same page, which sounds self-evident, but quite often that's not the case. So maybe the HR doesn't fully understand the requirements that the company has. Uh, the C-level doesn't understand what the lower levels are doing, etc. So overall, I think that this is like some solid advice, but obviously when the time comes to work on a transformation project, the devil is in the details. But I think it's very exciting to see some very prominent names in this field to share their thoughts about how you can go about transforming an organization through AI. I'll be very curious to hear your thoughts. Make sure to check some of the related content I have on my website and feel free to drop me an email with any questions you might have. So thank you for listening to this episode and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Make sure to visit thedatascientist.com for more content about data science, AI, and blockchain.